the our merchandise is unique because it's the nearest thing to the to the actual prop shot on the movie, um, and we can confidently say that because um, not only the prop shop um, manufacture a lot of the props for the movie, that but we you're standing in our scanning rig, and we as the as the props come off the set, we we, we scan them and we capture that data and then we take that data through a process where we can create 3D models and 3D components which we then 3D print. What I do is I take a scan from our scan department of the original prop and you can see one here. Uh, this is an example of Kira's staff. Um, so this is the original prop that's been scanned using a laser. So it's very high quality, very high definition uh, file, and I bring that file into my software package. Now what this does is it brings in every single detail, every little you know, uh, identifiable marking or uh, part of sort of engineering components that make up the staff. Um, and I can rotate that around and, and have a closer look at that. Then what I do is I begin drawing over the top of that, using that as a three-dimensional template to create uh, an original engineered piece, which is a, a carbon copy, if you like. It's exactly the same, um, but it's been engineered for manufacture now. The look's very important, that's paramount, but it also has to form and function as well. And so with Kyler and Sabre, um, we would print up a very different prototype to this one on a 3D printer, and then we'd, we would hand that to JJ. He would then literally take a Sharpie and draw on it and say, you know, I love this area. This is not working. Um, it's a bit bland here. We need a couple of details. That comes back to the 3D department. We then remodel it. It goes out to the 3D printers that evening. The next afternoon, we put it in front of him again. And so at the end of the day, you know, every Kylo Sabre hilt that we produce, uh, for example, that goes out to the public, every scratch, every dent has been policed um, and, and made sure it's there by people that are passionate and have first-hand experience with the actual, the, the master, the hero prop itself. Once we've acquired a digital model, either through uh, 3D scanning or 3D modelling, we then need to create a physical of that to make a final prop. Uh, what we do is we then 3D print those things. So what we have here is we'll see, once this print head is finished, we'll see the recoder come back across, which will lay down a 0.15 millimetre layer of powder, this is an acrylic powder. This process to do a helmet is roughly 20 hours. Um, we're then able to remove the job box once it's finished, place it into this machine, uh, where we're able to brush off the remaining loose powder to reveal our final model. But this specific workshop is is basically our assembly workshop. The people who are fans, the people who are going to be buying this stuff are so, you know, so into it. It's just, yeah, it's, it's, and every time we do it, you know, we're going back looking at the stuff that we've already done. If it's even slightly wrong, we're going back to the beginning, starting again, you know, to get something like the, the blood marks on Finn's mask, just, it, it's taken, we've had about seven painters having a go at it. We've got quite stringent tests that we have to carry out, you know, as far as product integrity, but then we've got really strict, um, you know, our own strict guidelines as to the aesthetics, the quality, you know, if things are going to fall apart, you know, obviously any of that stuff's just a, a no-no. So, um, so these things are literally as close as we can get to them being the real thing.